93 hits, 63 runs, 10 home runs, and 48 RBIs. I think we need a K right here. And we got one. He retires the side. It's clear that Nolan's kids know a legend when they see one. So into the 300th win time capsule climbed Reese's older brother, Reed. Well, here we are as we're going into the bottom of the sixth inning here at Rangers Baseball. We have along with us our uh, game analyst, Reese Ryan. Reese, let me ask you a question. What do you think of the game so far? Well, I'm pretty excited and I'm glad he's got a few runs to work with. I think we've got a real good shot at it. Bill, what do you think he's going to start this guy off with? Uh, curveball. All right. Bill says starting off with a curveball, Sheffield digs into the box, the windup, and the pitch. Fastball on the outside corner. Oh, balls, one strike. Bill, what do you think about that pitch? It was a hard curveball. Oh, it was a hard curveball there on the outside corner. All right. Ryan kind of walking around the mound right now, contemplating what his next pitch will be. Bill, what do you think he's going to come with? Curveball. Curveball. Bill Ziegler, you heard it here first. Curveball. 1-1. One, one. Ryan in the windup. And the pitch. Whoa, curveball right past him. <laughs> Bill Ziegler with a perfect call, folks. Reese, what do you think of the way Bill Ziegler's been being the color man tonight? Well, I think he's doing a really good job. And then he did help Nolan prepare before the game with talking to him a lot. You know, there's a large crowd here tonight, some 400,000, you know. Is it a giveaway night? I think it's free hat night. I don't think there's 400,000. I think there's 40,000. 40,000, that's what I meant, 40,000. Yeah, I think it is free hat night because I don't know what, why else they'd want to be here. I know, you know, it's either free hat night or nickel beer night. I haven't yet decided, but we'll find out. When we find out, we'll get back to you soon. You know, I can't figure it out. I thought he had six or seven Ks, but I look out there in the outfield and there's only one K. Yes, that's right. You know, if you go to the H section, to the J section, and then to the K section, there is only one K hanging. But you know what, Reese? I think that's a seating section. You might be right. Yep, well, we'll soon find out. No one steps back. Three balls, two strikes, payoff pitch. Ball four, low and away. Awesome. I don't know. Do you think? Do you think? Ryan, I think he should have got it up. That guy hasn't hit a lick all year, anyways. Yeah. What do you think? You think no one's back hurting him right now? No, I think he's still going strong. I think that's his first walk tonight. Yeah, he did walk him like an Egyptian. Vito goes out to the mound to talk to no one. You know, what do you think they're talking about? I think they're just making sure they got their signs straight. Yeah, the Rangers do have a very complicated signs, but I cannot reveal them on national TV. Yeah, there's a fairly large crowd tonight. What do you think he, they draw so many? See your dad pitch. Either one of these teams in the pit right. race. Oh, strikes out the side in the inning. This is Reese Ryan signing off live. Well, in the bottom of the eighth, while holding a tenuous 5-3 to three lead, Reese's father also signed off. A standing ovation for Nolan Ryan. 51,533 people in County Stadium, Milwaukee, on their feet, applauding the greatest strikeout pitcher, no-hit pitcher, to ever put on a Major League Baseball uniform. So now it will be up to the Ranger bullpen to get Nolan Ryan his 300th victory. You won't have much more pressure as a reliever. But Brad Arnsberg made sure this family affair had a happy ending. Arnsberg's pitch, fly ball, center field, this should do it. Pettis makes the catch, and Nolan Ryan and the Rangers are victorious. And you can charge up the bus for Cooperstown. Nolan Ryan officially has had his ticket validated. But while Cooperstown gets the legend, there's another little town that gets the real thing. It's where Ryan was raised, it's where Ryan still lives, it's where Ryan can just be Ryan. He can walk down to the post office and people just say, hi, Nola. He's usually in blue jeans and a, and a checkered flannel shirt with uh, uh, cow manure on his boots and he, as, he, as he goes about out. And this is the R that he represents. And yet he's got a million bucks probably in his pocket at the time. But you don't know this and you, and you don't, you, you don't want to know it. He's just no. He's just a common, ordinary citizen, a uh, guy who loves to ride his horse and go look at his cattle and uh, go to the high school baseball games. Uh, he's been at Little League games this year, he and Ruth both, and they're just uh, 
uh, Roots and Mothers Club, and they're just everyday common Alvin people. Recently, my grandfather passed away, and they sent flowers. You know, even though they were out of town, very busy, they, they don't forget things like that. They're very uh, concerned and interested in people that work for them. No one gives a lot to this community. No one gives a lot. Uh, more than the community's ever given Nolan. Six years ago, he came to us and started a baseball uh, fundraising scholarship fund uh, through a golf tournament. Then the proceeds from that golf tournament go to the baseball program. Most of the people in Alvin would rather uh, defend and protect Nolan other than to try to, to use him and stick him out front. He means everything to Alvin. He is, he is Mr. Alvin. Who ever heard of Alvin, Texas, uh, before Nolan came along? Nolan's done all right by baseball, but he also has a lucrative cattle business. And not so long ago, he bought a bank. Nolan is 100% owner and chairman of the board, and he fits in perfectly. It's probably one of the greatest things that's ever happened to this bank. Not everyone can own a bank. The question is, if he owns it, will they come? Well, I don't know that they will, but I'd like them to. And why would Nolan want to buy a bank? Well, maybe it's because he already owns the post office. Well, we get around 250 to 300 letters a day. Um, we process the mail, I sign pictures, we put a picture back in the mail and send it back to them. We have a, uh, a policy that if it's for a benefit, uh, auction item for a benefit, then we, we send something for that. So we try to be as accommodating as time allows. He signs every picture himself. He's never wanted to get a stamp. He um, feels very, uh, a sense of loyalty to his fans. He's the rarest of athletes, devoid of ego. Is there anyone who doesn't marvel at the things he's done? We had been to a cattle sale up at Houston at the old uh, Shamrock Hilton Hotel here several years ago. After the sale was over, we'd gone to a place up in Houston and we were eating a barbecue and had some great big onion rings. And we were sitting there eating just he and I. There was uh, four or five ladies at a couple of tables down. They kept staring at us and we knew that they'd recognize in the way they were looking. And one lady got up with her camera and she came down and said, I sure hate to bother you while you're eating, but uh, we're from New York, and we've never seen onion rings that size. Could we take a picture of those onion rings? In the news, gloves. Gloves don't make errors. People do. But it's nice to have a glove on hand to help you share the blame. At the end of the inning, <laughs> Willie McGee throws his glove away. I love it. How about that? <laughs> he says, this glove and I are not getting along. That young man that you saw his back, he just gave him the glove. He's going to go in and get a new one. Son, don't use, use that one at home. <laughs> Reporter's asking him some stuff. Now that's a reporter doing the job, isn't it? That glove went in the stands, and a minute later, this guy left the press box and sprinted to that youngster's seat. He's probably asking him, have you ever caught a foul glove in a game before, right? <laughs> Sometimes when you throw things, they come back to haunt you. Whoops. That's the hardest hit he's had all night. <laughs> And sometimes they hit umpires, which could really come back to haunt you. There's a play. Whoop. <laughs> Was he flipping his helmet at the umpire, or did it, it just happen to Randy Marsh has a good sense of humor? A good sense of humor is mandatory for umpires as the game goes hurtling by. Of course, even when umps get down for this game, they still must come up with the call. Thomas has got to hurry. Oh, Frank. Watch out, Don Dickinger. <laughs> that will make.
every yes. major yes. newscast <laughs> ever for years to come. He finished it off. Look at Don Denkinger. He's starting a safe call. He's down. He's safe. The Green Monster at Fenway Park is one of baseball's most enduring images. And this past year at Georgetown University, three students paid it homage on their dormitory wall. We've been thinking about what we could do for our senior year for a while, trying to think of something special. And um, being big baseball fans, we figured this would be a, to make a monument to the, to the game and to Fenway. Uh, might be a good way to go at Georgetown. Now they had to decide what moment the scoreboard should represent. And a 15-year-old World Series home run came to mind. Certainly, uh, probably one of the greatest games in baseball is the sixth game, if not the greatest game. It's the sixth game of the 75 World Series. So we've settled pretty much early on that it would be that game. Um, and the, the two best moments of that game, obviously the one everyone remembers is Carlton Fisk's home run in the uh, 12th inning. But. Uh, we were worried maybe that that wouldn't fill up enough of the scoreboard because you can see we only have the first two innings or you know one and a half innings filled on the scoreboard. So we're thinking for a while about doing Bernie Carbo's home run in the eighth inning to to uh, tie up the game. But when when push came to shove, the fifth home run was just you know, too big to too big to ignore. So we we went with that. This isn't your basic black light and poster dormitory decoration. This painting took a great deal of work. These aren't your ordinary colors. And um, it took us a while to even get the proper shades. And then after the process began, um, we were pouring over photos, trying to make every detail right. And um, it took about two weeks. I was putting in uh, 16 to 20 hour days for two straight weeks at the expense of both my social life and my academic life in order to get this wall done on time. The Red Sox started a winning streak the day we started it. And uh, they, they won, I think, six or seven in a row lost one when we didn't do too much work on the wall and then they started winning again and we thought that there must be some connection between uh, our devotion for Fenway and the, them winning. I had Dave over there holding me to a uh, strict curfew and uh, we uh, we put in uh, long hard hours and uh, it was only it was only well too worth it to see the final product here. But what would a painting that pays tribute to the Red Sox be without a touch of controversy. There's, there's a little controversy as to who's, who, uh, who originated the idea. I think it was myself. Some others think otherwise. From my point of view, uh, strangely enough, I think it was my idea to paint this wall. Well, it was a great idea, an even better execution. But now it's gone, whitewashed by the school in May, never to be seen again. I've expended every ounce of energy I've had to give to this wall, and uh, much like the uh, Sistine Chapel, I don't think I could, I don't think I could reproduce anything like it again. Baseball stands are fertile ground for getting up and looking round at lovers on the ups and downs, some happy, others on the rebound. Well, a proposal on the message board here in the ballpark, and this young man has just asked this pretty girl to marry her. It's getting to her. How about that? Had the message on the board. It's not getting to him. I mean, he's got to be a little more emotional. He's got to put a little more animation in that. He's going to have a tough time taking it back. <laughs> 40,000 people as witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> this ball fouled away and they counted one and one. Yeah, that's yeah. not the guy. No, there they go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That is terrific. Reminds me of Mookie Wilson who got married in the ballpark at Jackson, Mississippi. Don't delay when you say that reminds me of. I, I shouldn't delay, you're right. <laughs> I don't know, and I'm not, you know, I'm not again, I'm obviously 
before marriage, I'd been married a lot of times, but I mean, I mean, you like, mean not a lot of times, a, a lot of years. Don't get Wait, nervous. No. Don't get nervous now. A lot of years. <laughs> One time for a lot of years. But I don't know. I'm a little more romantic. I don't know if I would take my wife to be to a ballpark in front of 40,000 people to propose to her. I mean, this is not exactly a candlelight ceremony here, is it? It's a lit ceremony. I've always wondered when you do something like that, what would happen if they turn you down? But of course, she says yes. And now it begins. Tuxedos, a band, and a dress. Do you remember the couple that became engaged in the top of the fifth inning? Well, they are no longer here. And our, our producer, Jeff Mitchell, says that she wanted to stay, but he didn't. <laughs> Obviously, oh, that's great. they're going to pick out the wedding dress. Right? Oh, that's wonderful. And the very next night, in a star-crossed section, another nuptial fanatic pops the permanent question. Back at the vet, and what happened right there is that this gentleman has proposed <laughs> to that lady with the message on the scoreboard and has given her a ring and he has asked that lovely lady to marry him. Last night they did the same thing a different couple. Strangely enough, last night they didn't stay for the end of the game. I never understood that. <laughs> Maybe the Philly fanatic took them out. Well, wherever they go, you can bet they vow to come back. How about this right here? Happy couple, they just got married today. Now they should get Met fans of the year. That's a beautiful dress, isn't it? For a ball game. Oh, there it is. There's nothing like romance. Is that at the ballpark? Ah, well, Mookie Wilson got married in the ballpark. Down in Jackson, Mississippi. And married at home plate. He said that's the only way he could promise his wife and give her a big diamond. <laughs> how about Greg Jeffries? Number nine, be mine. Hey, how about these two? Go out tell you. New hats. Look at that. Outstanding. We just got married. Is that what you did when you just got married, Ralph? No, I, I don't recall really what I did. <laughs> <laughs> They're the national pastimes, marriage and baseball. You pitch, you score, you go home. But now how about these two here, Ralph? They're still in the ballpark. That fellow just got married today. Well, how about the woman? That's, That's true. Got. I guess both of them just got married today. Question is, where is that guy going to go now? Our stat of the week is the pitch men make to get behind the mic. And these days, the most common pitch comes from those who used to pitch strikes. right there. 2-2 two -two pitch. Struck him out. Scored right by him. Struck him out. Well, there's a big out right there. Waves at the fastball. Doesn't get it. Strike three. It's something understood by those behind the mic. If you want to broadcast baseball, you better learn to throw some strikes. deck for next week, Crosley Field revisited with a perfect recreation. Bringing back uh, Crosley uh, not only created a lot of uh, good memories for me, but I think it does for you know, all those people that visited Crosley over the years. It's just unbelievable the response we've got from people and uh, all the players that have come out like Jim Greengrass and guys like Jerry Lynch and uh, Gene Freeze that have played here. They almost cry because when you get up at home plate, you cannot tell the difference. This is Warner Fusel. 
Major League Baseball magazine is presented by Ruffles Light, Cheetos Light, and Doritos Light. Never give up the taste.